and boom. How you doing, Thomas? Doing good, Jared. How about you, man? Uh, surprisingly, there's no guest today. Surprisingly, hey. There we go. We haven't had, we haven't done this in a while. Like a solo podcast, I'm pretty sure we yeah. do one every week, but that's different. Like, because like we interact with the fans or whatever. Like, but for this, we're kind of like just two lads chatting shit. Do you like the new format? I'm really liking the new format. We gotta yep. say you put a lot of work into this and it's really mm. paid off. Well, it's it's sexy. I, I I like it. I kinda did copy some other guys. Um yeah, the PKA podcast, they're pretty cool. Painkiller already. Um hopefully we maybe get them on the show sometime. But um obviously above me, you got the old awfully Irish in the corner, you got the old uh logo, you got the uh the email if you wanna give us a shout. And then you got the the Twitter. And then you got the sponsor over there, Manscaped, how you doing? Uh, so yeah, it's a bit, bit of fun, bit of fun beside Thomas's head. And after, <laughs> someone pointed out to us the other day that um, it's like unholy for Thomas to be on the left and me to be on the right. We went back to our usual, so, so yeah. So what, what, what's what been relevant at the moment? What's going on? There's just always stuff going on, Jared. ED, EDP. Mind. Have you seen it? Yeah, um... I kind of watched some of it, but I, I've seen lots of memes about it, so I, I have the gist of what went on. Um, didn't I tell you that the guy who exposed him was also, like, exposed for being a pedophile? <laughs> like, I don't know. Was he, was he caught for being a pedophile? I know, like, he was, like, doing some dodgy stuff with Black Lives Matter. Like, he would call them, like, screaming the N-word with a hard R, like, down the, uh, down the mic. Fucking horrible, man. And he called it a prank video? Like... Oh. Yeah, he, you, re- he, you really got him. Last, um, so, pretty much yeah. basically <laughs> you really got him <laughs> good job but yeah this, he's not someone you would have thought of um, no, to, to have been that way I guess the ones that you never really expect that mm. would kind of shock you the most okay, it su- surprised me how lonely he was because like when, when he's being interviewed by those guys he was basically like loneliness is the, is the reason why but I've seen people like Critical basically say that's complete BS with how famous he is yeah. Yeah, I kind of watched a bit of Critical's video on it, but I didn't really. I maybe watched like ten minutes into it, and I kind of just turned it off after he started playing the text mess the, the text messages, and that shit was fucked up. Like it was just horrible what the yeah. guy was saying. I mean, really, just weird stuff. And I didn't. I stopped watching it after that, but I've seen other people talk about it, and I've seen. The excuses he's made, like he went to go meet someone for a cupcake or some stupid shit, <laughs> and they're like, "What are you doing out here today, sir?" Oh, I'm just getting the cupcake. That's so dumb. That's rough. That's yeah. rough. I'm glad, glad he got caught though, because like he said, like it was up to six people so far. Like, how, how far was he gonna go? Like, obviously, if you got, if you're in like what six deep so far, and you realize you had a problem, he would have went for help because he he said to the guys, he'll go get help if they don't tell anybody. But uh, that obviously didn't happen. Yeah. And then he made videos like saying it was complete BS. It wasn't true. Okay. But he keeps kind of bringing like his, his dead mom into the equation. That like, doesn't really like his mom didn't raise a creep or like a a pedophile or anything like that. Right. I don't I don't know why that is his shtick at the moment. I don't get that. To be honest yeah, it'd be like the guys didn't get it either. Like, what is your what is your mom up to doing it? We're, t- we're dealing with you. Yeah. Um, like I said, it, it was shocking because he's been known for this very mean kind of presence on the internet where people would laugh whenever they saw him. Mm. And, so it's, I, and he had like 2 million subscribers. I mean, that's big. That's like 2 million. But even if you didn't watch him, you knew who he was. Oh, yeah. Like pe- people say his his influence outweighed his, his fame. So like everyone, everyone has seen the meme of like I I, I beat my dick so goddamn hard I can't feel my left leg, you know. If you've seen like his, his memes like that, but uh, realistically, how many actually watched him? I had never watched him. Like I didn't even Same. know that, that was his name before. Same. Someone told me like, did you hear what happened to him? I'm like, who the fuck is that? And they were like, oh, remember that? You know, I'm like, oh yeah, him. Okay, yeah. But like, I'd actually never known what his name was or anything. Like. <laughs> I seen I seen lads do like a they they read all the messages because I know someone did like a stream with the messages. Yeah. And it looks like he might have been a virgin. Like he was like what thirty something. I think he might. He's he's almost forty, and like he 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 was talking about like 
a sex toy. What, what was it? It's like a flashlight. And he says like he thinks it's supposed to feel like a like a like a vagina. Oh, okay. And like, yeah, because they were reading that like they read it a couple of times the way he said it and everything. It looks like he he's never been with someone like. Yeah, that's that's rough. Like he was really that lonely. I know, man. I yeah. fucked. It, and it obviously does an excuse like what he did like he's trying to like he's trying to get with like 13 year olds no way it's horrible yeah um it's fucked the whole situation i don't don't see him getting out of it but i hope like, he doesn't there's, there's guys like what's his name james charles who has had like zero repercussions for doing this stuff on multiple occasions yeah where he should be held accountable it's weird well he's... edp was called like red-handed like he was caught going to this person's house James James Charles has like messages that, like the first guy, he he said like James got with him and all, but nothing came of that. Like he didn't even like follow through what he was saying. Mm. Um, I don't know what the most recent story is with James. Um, I think he admitted to it, didn't he? Okay, I, I I've never watched any of his videos. <laughs> I, I I think I think I think I think my sister told me, I think he um admitted to it. I was trying to excuse it. And he was saying uh, he was younger, he was dumber, but it was a year ago. Okay. How old do you know? He's, he's about 24, 23. He's about the same age as Jake Paul, right? Somewhere in that age range, yeah. Some, mm. Something like that. I have no idea. I just, you, you'd see him around the internet sometimes. Like, I, I, never, I don't think I've ever watched any of his videos. Maybe <laughs> maybe one. Like, I, I'd be questioned if you did. <laughs> I mean, uh, like, I'm not really into makeup not my thing I've, I've had people put makeup on me before i used to be an actor you know like yeah <laughs> I, ret- I think we've talked about this before when i did the hairspray and someone had to put like so so in hairspray um it, like in the movie john travolta had to play the mother because traditionally the mother of the main character is also is always played by a man and so I, I, so I was auditioning for, I think it was the dad. They're like, oh no, Thomas, you're, you're going to be the mother. <laughs> so I was the mother for that show. And I had dresses, wigs, makeup, tan, the whole lot, man. And how'd that go? It was great. I never seen you as like a drag kind of guy. No, well, you know, things you don't know about <laughs> me, Jared. There, there's there you a couple go. pictures on the internet of me in that dress and... Fair play if you find them. Those pictures were to ever resurface, it would be the end of it. <laughs> and it'd be like, remember, do you know how like, Tom Holland has that video of him like dancing with the umbrella in like the maid's outfit? <laughs> no. No, I've never seen that. What? <laughs> never seen that. It's a bit like it's a bit like the same situation in that. Okay. You know? But uh hopefully that picture well people could expose do Tom a Holland. Lot, a lot of digging they'd be able to find it, but I mm. doubt it'll ever <laughs> Reach yeah. the light of day at this point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> here hoping, here hoping. It stays <laughs> hidden for you. Yeah. Yeah, some some dodgy stuff going on with YouTubers at the moment. I like I like you're saying, like dirt being pulled up on them. You, I, I wonder who else has got stuff going on. Dodgy place though, man. I mean, it's always been a dodgy place. Anybody can make an account and anybody can make it like famous. So they, like, like YouTube doesn't do background checks on these people. They don't know if they have. Any I'm glad problems. they don't. That'd be very it's, like. But like the same dystopian. Point you got you got the bad people like EDP who had two million followers and exposed for being a pedophile, or you got James Charles. You got Call Me Carlson. You got. Forgot about him. Know, well, he's not. He's not as well, bad, right? Like he was. Bad, he was nineteen. She was seventeen. It's complicated, man. It's the law. I don't. I don't no. know where it is. I don't know what else was going on with him, but I know that much. Um, I think he got pictures off her, which was still like illegal. Yeah. Which would yeah, which is the reason he's in trouble. I think. He's still or or it's an or it's an abuse of his power. You 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 can check it there. Um, I've, I've no idea. Does he still like make? I videos, haven't a clue. I haven't a clue with that guy. Yeah, lads, with this with this new format, um, we can't really pull things up anymore. Like one of us will pull it up and we'll. Hope to God we got it right, you know? No. Last thing he posted was four months ago. Just kind it's of been left. Four that, months. That, that, that's YouTube now, but I don't know about Twitch because I know he did stream on Twitch, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't. <laughs> it's not as bad. Wasn't Pirate Cynical like ex- exposed as being a furry or something? <laughs> yeah, man. Or, oh, no, it was worse. He did like. 
he had this like furry vor thing going on, and he would like do with anyone who would. Yeah, and one of them message him. happened to be a minor. And he was fourteen, right? Something like that. It Fuck. Was fucked. Man, I'm, I imagine like you, oh, you mentioned like your favorite YouTuber, and this is the kind of shit that's being talked about. That is rough. No, that, that's a shame because I actually like Pyro Cynico and that shit came out and I, was I, like, oh. I used to like him too. Oh, yeah. that's a bit weird, man. I mean, he he's making videos again though. He made one with Tommy in it there and made it like a couple of weeks ago or so. I didn't fucking watch it. I don't watch his videos anymore, but he made one. The two of them were talking about the vegan teacher who is yeah. possibly worse than a lot of pedophiles that are here. <laughs> she is I mean, pretty, pretty bad in fairness. Uh, like she's really like cursed like she compared like black people with animals or killing animals to holocaust so and then, not, not only did she do that like you, you might say something like by accident by comparing people with animals like that wasn't the case she defended like comparing black people to animals for a while like saying like you, you can compare anything that's that they're yeah it, it's really Sure, you can compare anything, but there's some things just don't like. That's just pretty much stupidity and like so disrespectful. Because at the time, it was go- it was all this like Black Lives Matter protest going on, and that's when she chose to say it. Do you know why she got banned off TikTok, or even aware that she got banned off TikTok? I know she got taken off. She got taken off because do you know Tommy Enid, the Minecraft YouTuber? He'd be friends no. with Dream and no, I don't follow. So he's he's a sixteen year old from the UK who plays Minecraft with dream and he's on that s p the big dream s p hmm. and he, he was talking about like oh i mean he did he made a tiktok thing i'm in college with girls being being like you know funny kind of like i have no idea how to talk to girls kind of thing and she was like why don't you contact this person and she'll tell you how you can get your zucchini to meet their watermelon or i'm like lady you're like you're like 50 talking to a 16 year old will you shut up yeah and and she got banned and then she was like and then her whole thing is about like oh free speech oppression <laughs> like you know what I mean? suck my free speech but I mean, it's, it's gonna have consequences yeah like there should be but i i know like speech, man. growing up like well you should have the right to say what you want to say oh, you, you should Other, yeah. otherwise you live in like a dystopian kind of authoritarian yeah, but that's rough. There should be consequences of what you say. Well. Oh, absolutely. That, that's People that's a held big part of it. And getting banned off TikTok was being <coughs> held accountable for telling a 16 year old to. But, like, you ha- know? how many times have you had, like, a family member, like, say something like that? You'd be getting all the girls or whatever? Or have you had, like, friends say it to you? Those, but they're not. 50 year old women off the internet in fa- okay in fairness so, <laughs> yeah but i don't know that i've never met who man if i, I if, if i was 16 do. and she did that and she was like you know I, I would laugh i would not be like offended or oh, anything. They didn't really care to be honest it, yeah it, it was tiktok that took it down and saw okay but yeah I, i'd be okay with it she, i would think it's pretty another, funny she made another account about like uh, she made another tiktok account she made a youtube account which was really weird. She was trying to talk about animal oppression and she used a, an abbreviation of the N-word. I don't really know what that was about, to be honest. It's really... She's like a what? She, person, she tried to like adapt it to animals? I have no idea. Like, had you heard it before or it was like she invented it? I have no idea. I haven't seen right. the video. I've just seen people talk about the video. I mean, she's just the kind of person that does that kind of shit to get attention so that people will listen to her, I guess. But you only have a small p- portion of the people listening that actually listen to her. The rest of it are just like clowning her or just taking the piss out of her, really. Uh, yeah, when you're when you're that bad, like, what do you expect? Because we, we we've had vegan guys on. We've had guys who are like mostly yeah. plant based, and they're so nice. Uh, like, not not a bad word. But we've also had like God. guys who are like carnivores. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah sh- shout out to Brian Sanders. That guy, that guy, I think he's onto something. He, he's been like yeah. exploding recently. Has he? Yeah. Yeah, like he, he's seriously got a lot of people behind him. And I he, didn't realize he, that he invented that diet. He invented it? Like it wasn't just like, you know, oh, carnivore. He invented the sapien. The, the sapien diet, yeah. It's kind of like a twist on paleo. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting what he's got going on. 
Yeah. I, I want to follow that, man, but at the same it's hard. time... It's hard. Like, carbs are nice. Dude. I'm not going to lie, man. I, I had wraps today, you know, to eat it. Pretty nice stuff, like, you know? I, I did it, and I lost weight, and then I put on weight. Mm. And then I got out of it, but then I put on way more weight. Uh, I went from like at the start of the pandemic to one, from 145 to 186. That's a big weight gain for me. It's the heaviest I'd ever been with before that was 155 when I was competing. And um, yeah, that, that, that was rough. Because you didn't, you don't never notice it. And how often do you step on a scale? Yeah. No. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll give it a go again. But I, I think you need access to like serious, like good yeah. meats. Like you're eating steak for breakfast. But you're like you're not like doing like a basting of a butter or, or something. You just gotta have it like nearly plain, maybe a bit of garlic. Well, a lot of people do that. They'll, they'll cook it in their own fat with steak. Like that's what I'll do if I'm mm. frying it up now. Or I know I know I've said it to you before, but sometimes I'll put it in the George Foreman, which is sick. I don't. It's a family thing, man. Uh, you, you, you got issues, man. <laughs> the George Foreman is great, man. He, 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 For he's sandwiches, a, yeah. He's a tremendous boxer. Right? in all fairness to the guy and he makes really nice sandwiches fair play to yeah <laughs> I, I don't know what the story is there with you that's just mental <laughs> I mean I also have one of those do you have an air fryer oh fuck yeah how can you get elite. by without one elite <laughs> so you put some chicken nuggets in there oh baby oh, I, I only kind of put chips in it but like it's nice it is yeah. fucking nice man seriously like nothing's really pretty it's pretty fucking healthy for you as well like compared to like oh fuck yeah deep frying or frying or but, other, other forms of cooking like this. In, in my house we we bake or air fry everything yeah yeah hmm. because like like my my mom and my sister can't really handle grease okay in fairness i hate it as well like i, I like my stomach will be fine them not so much yeah i mean it's a shit but, um, you're, you're so funny do you know what you're so fucking funny but yeah <laughs> no it's kind of it's kind of kind of dodges to be a bit healthier be, be healthy where you can yeah i'm pretty bad for it because I, I make a lot of uh pan fried food so i'll have like the tiniest bit of oil or spray oil and like I'll, the one cow spray yeah one cow spray i'll do that and then i'll fry up onion chicken sauce marinade whatever i'm doing ha- has anyone ever checked to see if it's really one cow per spray No idea. If people can sue, if people can sue Red Bull for not giving them wings, <laughs> you can probably sue. I'm not recommending it, but uh, you could probably like say, "What's the story here? I got I got two and three and even five calories in my spray. What's going on here?" I mean, false advertisement. There's laws against that, right? Boom. Yeah. No, they're they're, they're pretty. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty serious over here. Oh yeah, they're, they're really serious over here. Or e- even like. If they're discriminatory in any way, like it's for women, didn't last very long before it got sued by a guy. Got sued by a guy. Well, yeah, because you know it's for women is only for women, and okay. it's according to like Irish law, which I, I I do agree with it. Like you can't really say like okay, it's only for one group of people because that's a slippery slope that that people worked really hard to get out of. Yeah. So why would you try do it? So like. It kind of made sense. Eventually, a guy would be like, "You can't just make it only for women." But yeah, I think it was also because they were super cheap. It's not yeah. a car insurance thing. I'm, I'm that's ca- that's car yeah, insurance. That's exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I should I should have said that. Yeah. No, yeah, but I was thinking it, I, it's for women with the car insurance thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But this this is a while back. Like, okay. we're we're studying this in business when I was like in like fifth year. Okay. Like, so. Yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird some of the stuff we got going on over here. I, even, even like, we were talking about living in a bog the other day with your man, uh, Samuel Goodman. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised how much you knew about them because, like, they're not really anywhere else. No, they're not, actually. Yeah. I think, aren't they going to stop people from, like, taking up bog in a couple of years now? They're going to stop people from actually cutting it? I think they already officially stopped that. Have they? So people are just kind of getting the scraps? Or. Well, you could. Dude. I, I think it's ridiculous they want people to stop doing it. Stop the companies doing it because people did it for thousands of years and barely made a dent in it. And uh, they stop companies from doing it. Like from yeah, mass, like because they're destroying it, yeah. They're burning dirt as a lot of carbon and they're fueling Ireland on that. Mm. There's other things we can use. 
No, yeah, I, I think Wood would nearly be better. Um, but seriously, like they could do so much better. Um, and then like as a result of the companies doing wrong, they stop me and you from doing it. And yeah, I I kind of kind of really hate when they. I'd be more on the libertarian side like that. You know, like I want people to be allowed to do what they want, but there has to be consequences if they do something wrong. Yeah. I mean, in all fairness, man, you can talk about how individuals can help with, like, stop climate change and stuff like that. But it's up big companies that are really fucking us up. Like, like you, you recycling your bottle, your plastic bottle is good, man. But it's hardly going to stop Ryanair from producing, what, 50 million tons of fucking... Yeah, I get you. Into the air every day, like. Will, will you check for, there for me, like the difference, like that individuals versus, like companies have on, on climate change. Yeah. Yeah, because I I think you're right in saying like that's a big fucking difference. Yeah. But like you can do your part when it helps a bit, man. But. Like yeah, pick up your rubbish. Don't be a scumbag. It's gonna be there forever. Um, now, if it's a can or something, you know, it's not there as long, but it's still as bad. I don't know exactly what you want me to look up, but there's a thing here by the BBC, and it's it's who is to really blame for climate change, which I'd say is... What's the consensus? Um, Jesus, it's, it's, it's you, Jared. No. But... <laughs> the awfully... Oh, oh my God. Yeah. 70% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions over the previous two decades are attributed to just 100 fossil fuel producers. That's fossil, pretty fucking bad. Fossil fuel companies, so like, say, Bored and Amona before they switched to renewable energy sources, something like that, you know? Um, rich people, apparently. <laughs> Bezos, you know, with his drones, man. Yeah. You see, now, that's why I like yeah. someone like Elon, like, they're trying to make a difference with Tesla. Yeah. I saw a Tesla today charging, you know, the the power station near where I live. So, the, yeah. so, so I walk outside there every day and there's a Tesla just charging. That's on, really on the, cool. On the company ground. So when they're working, they'll have their Tesla like charging and stuff. Yeah. And it is now. Apparently, I, I, I've, I've start, is. started to get really concerned about like planned obsolescence when it comes to like technology and all because of how difficult it is to like recycle that like you know like i have that old graphics card over there beside me yeah it's fucking huge and i'm looking at that thing like how much shit had to be done to get that and oh, is yeah. it really worth throwing it out or recycling it i'm pretty sure you just got a bunch of old gpus you could probably work them the same as it's not that's modern why one. Hate, that's why i hate food spoilage or food, food wastage man because i always feel bad about what what people like just say for bananas right bananas aren't grown in ireland man. they're grown they're grown in jamaica you know and they're they're transport preserved well they're, they're grown a lot of places but yeah but, but you know what i mean like and, and so if, if if i have one that's just rotten there in my kitchen counter i'm not going to throw it out do you know what i do with that i make well, banana bread same yeah i, I love banana bread my, my, my girlfriend's notorious for her banana bread yeah. it's and pretty, sometimes pretty we'll good. put like uh walnuts in it as well that's cool there. Really cool. Yeah, yeah. Bananas are one of those things. Like, we actually wait till they go off a little bit. Hmm. Name one other food that they do that way. Um, like that 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 shark they eat in Iceland. I mean grapes. Wine, yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of. I like grapes. When you're I making it, raisins, you, raisins. You just dry up. You don't let raisins go bad. Yeah, you do, man. You you let grapes go bad and make raisins. I thought you like take the juice out of out of them and that's raisins. No, you just let them go bad, brother. Don't you dehydrate them? Absolutely not. I have no idea if that's true. I'm talking about okay. my head. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I I don't know there. I have uh, no idea, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't really like raisins. They, I, they don't appeal to me. They're they they Man, the betrayal, the fucking betrayal when you're sitting there having an old sound time. Someone offers offers you like a muffin, you're thinking oh a chocolate muffin, a sound out, yeah. nice good old cookie, subway job, and raisin, man, man that ruin your fucking day. It's horrible. 
No, it's... It, it is like... It's seriously... It's like a heartbreak. It's a heartbreak. What, what? Likes raisins in their cookies, or their their milk. So, psychopaths mainly. Maybe. Um, I'd say so. Yeah. I mean, if you look at that road, there's a lot of raisins being eaten. Really. <laughs> uh, I, was about, I was watching a video earlier on. They were talking about this uh, documentary about chefs on death row. No, chefs making food for death row. In like really interesting one, and kind of cool actually. No, yeah, because you wouldn't really think of it that like someone's job is to literally make food for death row inmates. Like, it's... but it's also someone's job to like kill them. Oh, yeah, which is like, e- even saying, worse. How how I'm do you even saying, get that job? Um, like, what would you work as like a prison guard and then get your way there, or are you like? I presume it's some some kind of subcontractor. I have no idea. Maybe like, I guess like a, because it really sounds like a doctor thing, but like you can't kill people if you're a doctor don't, you, don't take like the, the the oath or something yeah they do they try to do their best to like not kill anybody or if they yeah. do it's like on them I, I have no idea really yeah um i don't know how anybody would get that job it's a fucking like I say, it's a weird uh, interview process i am glad it's a mystery yeah yeah like who, who would you have who would you take for it? like people who've been to war people are used to killing people as i say maybe they'd have to have some kind of military experience or maybe they'd have maybe to, uh, yeah <laughs> no oh, yeah we're talking about our ass here isn't it? Like, that's really weird yeah but like, back, back to the chef thing like it, it was just really weird to hear like the perspective of a chef like who trained in culinary school to you know probably open up his own restaurant to make in these really really nice meals or that's weird to put on your cv like imagine he quits that and he's like you know what i want to work in a restaurant top of the line and you're given in your cv and it's like i fed death row inmates their last meal mm. for 20 years not one complaints Phenomenal. and the reason it wasn't a complaint is because i don't oh, think they got the chance yeah yeah that's um that's rough man i wouldn't that's want that job rough. yeah i wouldn't want any i wouldn't want a job in prison man oh fuck yeah wouldn't you're surrounded by people who are mental well not mental but miserable or you're like they what about min- like minimum security prison like people who are like yeah i kind of dodged my tax for a bit too long yeah that's it like tax fraud and like uh, fourth situation kind I, of I got caught selling weed in a state where it was okay, was okay. was illegal and now it's legal but i'm still in here you know that kind of stuff yeah i think it would be it's all right i say security would have an easier time in there instead but instead of somewhere like you know where all the crimes are for murder or mm. something like that you know yeah i, I don't know I, I still still would dodge that uh yeah yeah Pre- prison is one of those things i never want to find out about you know no but it's really bad but um these prisoners i mean they're, going they're, full circle more, it should be more like rehab where it's more of a reform where well it, it kind of depends like, do you reform a murderer i mean circumstantial isn't it i mean oh yeah that's you're right it is circumstantial but someone like who committed like defense or... tax tax fraud like that like you can fix that guy just like yeah, pay, your, pay pay your fucking taxes buddy or else you're in here longer of course um but yeah like look, look, you know, look at someone like jordan belfort who gives seminars to or i kind of like you know he's a really bad like, guy i like him but i used to like him i used to think he was a cool guy but he's really really bad like he fucked up the economy and was like laughing about it and now he charges people 10k to get in their show there's another podcast that was way bigger than us and i had a friend uh tell me about this and he he asked for 10k to get on the podcast so what the guy did was he exposed jordan belfort for asking for 10k imagine imagine like a multi-millionaire who's been to jail for like some dodgy shite who's still making a fuck ton of money he, was, he realistically shouldn't be asking for 10k off a youtuber to talk about himself for one hour scummy <laughs> i'm not a fan of that kind of behavior in fairness Weird. jeff jeff bezos would charge less i mean jeff bezos would probably do it for free man the guy the guy would actually you know that's if he had the time to himself trying to pick up money on the street like how much money does does that guy make a second? 
they used to say that about Bill Gates. If he dropped 50 euro and went to pick it up, he'd have made it made like how many times more? Yeah. But Jeff Bezos is like so much more is, is so much richer. What what would Elon. that be for him? Yeah. Elon is worth more than Bezos now, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he I was for they, a while. I've not still think is. they're worth. I don't think they're the most richest guys alive though, because I want to say Genghis Khan was richer, but he's worth more. I think the most successful company of all time was still like the East Indies company, like the British Empire thing. Okay, Genghis Khan was worth hundreds of trillions. Well, he he, some, he did I occupy know, I, Korea I know, to like Finland. Conversion rates back in the day, man, just like. Uh, so the fearsome Mongol leader conquered a mind blowing 12 million square miles of land between 1206 and 1227. Yeah. He was alive for 21 years. Or is that just when he was in power? Probably when he was in power. Like he hardly yeah. started that one years old. And then, oh, I'll go take Korea. You know what? We're going to make it all the way to Finland. Well, I want to actually look up who the person worth the most money. You say like probably the English monarch or British um, Empire? You look up what the most, um, I don't know how how you phrase it, the richest company of all time. Okay, this this person called John D. Rockefeller. Yeah. Richest American ever is widely considered to be John D. Rockefeller. He's worth about four hundred billion. Yeah. In inflation adjusted dollars, or around two percent of the United States GDP. For one dude. Could could you check that there with the uh the richest company of all time? I'm pretty sure it was one of those colonial ones. Richest company in the world, Walmart. That's probably not right. His historical Ever. or something. Try 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 get that one because it looked like <laughs> Apple was like the close. Largest companies by consolidated 2020. What's the richest company in history? Okay, uh, Vereen, I, Usta. Okay, no, it's. VOC is a Dutch East India company. There we go. Was a mega corporation set up by the Dutch government by combining multiple rival Dutch character companies into one mega company, limiting the competition, which was stifling profits. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hmm. But like that, that's crazy. Like that, the colonial ship was like the most powerful, like or richest company of all time. Where did all that money go to? I wonder. Where's that hanging around now? Those Spanish doubloons off the coast of like wherever. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of dodgy what they did back in the day. I remember, didn't Switzerland raise their um, their like, what's it called? Their minimum wage to like $15 or something. And I remember someone telling me that was because of all the the gold they had gotten from the Nazis back in the day or some shit. They still own the Nazi gold, yeah. That's what I mean, right? So pretty they're doing all right right i mean i want yeah I, i'm not sure on that one but yeah that makes sense profiting off nazis that's okay well dead nazis yeah <laughs> otherwise that'd be a different different story yeah well you know <laughs> yeah for leaving in switzerland man. they're doing great mm. their mistake for being terrible individuals they're kind of like that universal evil where like everyone agrees yeah that was fucking terrible Name, 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 like one other thing that people agree was like, like as evil as that. It's like the one universal evil that we can agree I'd on. I say nine eleven, but people are still like, well, it's America's fault. I don't hold yeah. that view, but I've I've I heard guess, that I argument. Guess, I guess it would be the Nazis, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because even with like the Soviet Union, there's people who are like me. Really, but they did some dodgy stuff. Uh, yeah, but we'll we'll, we'll dodge that topic. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll dodge that like a <laughs> like a fifty cal to the head. Um, what else? I, I had something to say about EDP a second ago. It was like when we start talking about prison, it was like, oh, we've gone full circle. Yeah, I wonder what's going to be like for him when he gets in there. Like YouTuber, will they recognize him? Do you think you'd put him in prison? I mean, well, it has, it the severity of his thing, right? I think as YouTubers, it'll come out like. Well, Tony FPS Russia went to jail for having for buying weed. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, he also lost four hundred thousand worth of firearms. Yeah, you were telling me that, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, right? But I'm th I'm thinking of like 
online social media presences who have openly said they have. But he he's like not big enough to get away with it. Not like valued enough to get away from it. Dude, like Tony Lopez, the guy has like a couple million followers on TikTok. Or he's no, I'm I'm talking about EDP. Like he's not oh, EDP, big enough yeah. to get away with it. Oh yeah, but like there's people bigger. James Charles got away with it. I know we were already talking. No, about well him, but, he he yeah. had like his monetization turned off by YouTube. Like he's done. Yeah. They're not gonna pay him anymore. Fair enough. He also got dropped by like companies like Mor Morphe. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Or like David Dilbrick doesn't post anymore because of his friend. You know. Uh, well, he was operating a crane and his friend hit his head and almost he could could have died on that thing for like a prank video. I'm talking about his friend like having sex with a minor and David Dobrik recording it and putting it on YouTube. Well, like him outside the room. I Were thought you David, unaware of this? I didn't know about that. I know David Dobrik yeah. like really hurt one of his friends fairly no, recently. Of, of this, this is why he stopped doing YouTube. Because of his friend doing that, and so his friend got with a minor. Did they know she was a minor? Now I don't know all the details. Let, let me find out what happened. But basically, he I've never heard of this. Yeah, um, and that's why people wanted David to stop it. David, I didn't know that at all. I've never really known what he's been doing. I, I don't know much about the guy at all. I know he's like a he's a vlogger. He got pretty big. I don't know was that because of TikTok or what was that about? Oh, YouTube. Um. Okay, so in a video uploaded to YouTube channel, David Dobrik addresses recent allegations allegations of sexual misconduct against former and current members of the vlog squad. Um. That's rough. Trying to find where that's the. What makes you he think this is like a content opportunity? Video explaining that he wanted to address his, the conversations currently happening. He noted that he's made countless videos, tweets, and contents for the internet, and that the consent is always super important to him, whether I'm shooting a friend or shooting a stranger. Um, okay, so according to Insider Report, one of his friends had been accused of sexual assault, which the accuser had said occurred while he was shooting a video. That later appeared on Dobrik's channel. So, Dobrik acknowledged in this clip of the person who changed their mind after filming. To the down, he's continued saying there's also been moments. So, yeah, so that's why he stopped uploading on YouTube. Because that came out that. And <clears throat> I think that pretty much puts Mr. Beast up as the number one YouTuber. Do Dobrik was pretty well known for being a pretty good YouTuber for a while. I wonder if he's on anything bad, Mr. Beast. I doubt it. That man is so fucking pure. I would like if anything, I really if, hope if something came out about him, man. I'd probably fucking delete social media. It's it's just not worth it after that. The guy's an angel. Like, did you see what his video was the other day? No. The guy, the guy paid a bounty hunter like a hundred grand to chase him when he he drove a, a Ferrari, a chopper. I mean, that guy's a freaking legend. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. And he gets like 25 million views in one day. Probably even more. I think he hit like, I think it was a billion views in a week. A couple of weeks ago, man. The guy is, the guy's a kid. Like, he, like he, he, may, he gets more views than some people will get in their entire YouTube career. Yes. Yes, he will. Yeah. I think he's closing the gap for like beating PewDiePie, man. There's only like, I'd say 40 million subscribers between them but like mr beast had i think it was one million three years ago but pewdiepie had you know well pewdiepie grew at an exponential rate for maybe like a year or two because of the sub war but like people just keep subscribing to mr beast <laughs> and he has like four or five different channels all bringing in millions on the daily mm -hmm. he has one that's just set up for like his charitable organization what like, oh, he's a charity organization he owns a hostel shelter, so he that's really cool. Or a food shelter or something. So people watch the videos. All the money of that goes straight to buying food for the needy, for people who need a house. Like I, I'd, I'd love to be that big. You know, to be able oh, to do would, shit like that. You? I mean, yeah, and it's really smart. The guy has become a millionaire off doing that shit. Crazy, becoming man. a millionaire from for giving away money, like it, it's crazy. Like you know, people tell me like, oh, don't waste your money. You want to become rich. It's like Mr. Beast, like I'll do it anyway. Fuck you. 
<laughs> he is a unique individual. He uh, there's, there's some some kind of like genius level intelligence going on there. Oh fuck yeah! Like he, he kind of plays a character, like but I'd say oh, like yeah. outside of it, he really is like a fucking borderline genius. Oh yeah, yeah, it has to be. Yeah, I mean, to get that big and to understand how to keep it going. Mm. Yeah, because like getting like twenty five million views per video, and keeping that trend going. It's probably not very easy. That's oh God, no. like you might get like a viral video that gets that big, but to keep that going every video consistently, yeah, that takes something. Go to his channel, yeah, and have a look. Say like his last five videos that have come out, and I'll, I'll go to his main channel because that's kind of like the, the one he uses the most, or he's most well known for Mr. Beast. Sixty million subs now. Okay, so two days ago was the uh, the Bounty Hunter, twenty six million. Then the week before that was the 100 grand tag, 34 million. Week before that was would you sit in snakes for 10 grand, 40 million. The one before that, 44 million. The one before that, 74 million. Every video I'm looking at here has over 30 million views. Like every single fucking video. I've seen someone bring up that, like he's at a, at a point where he's so big, like he can nearly compete with cinemas. Yes. Like, the only only place that cinemas would win against him is in their watch hours, because yeah, in terms of, in terms of, like he gets people to watch, he might get twenty five million people to watch for fifteen minutes, but they get like four million to watch for three hours. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but it's kind of crazy. Like a YouTuber like him can nearly compete, but he he is like the upper echelon of. Of YouTubers, like there's oh. no no one doing better than Mr. Beast right now. Not really. I mean, no, not no, really. no, none that come to mind. Like that nearly the kind of stuff he does. Maybe music artists. That's about it, though. Like maybe like you know Justin Bieber, Vivo. That'd be the kind of only thing competing with him right now. Would be. Yeah, but they cause... might have a song up for three months, and then it eventually catches up to him. Yeah, you you have like people that are would like. They think they're bigger than him. Like, just say someone like KSI, man, who's been at it for years, and people would know of him more. But the guy gets like a million views on his video, and yeah, well, in fairness, is maybe four or five times bigger than yeah, the guy has what fucking twenty times the population of Ireland, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair play to him. Maybe, 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 maybe we'll get like a percent of what he does eventually one day actually a percent of what he does sounds all right that would that would really set you up for life nearly pretty much man. one percent of what mr mr beast does like Did you ever see that video it's like for every view this uh video gets i'll give my friend one cent that that video is still like going on today so and, and yeah. it automatically updates the the thumbnail or something. yeah i've seen that i've seen another guy do that pretty recently yeah like he he was the first guy to do it. He he showed up like this. Or he did this thing where this video now has blank amount of views. I've seen that. And yeah. His whole video was about like AI and how powerful it's gotten, how easy it is for everyone to use now. That he he made like a very simple AI that would just update the the thing for him. Yeah. So, Mister Beast probably said, "How are you getting on? Want to show me how to do that?" Or yeah, I don't know. I feel like when you when you get up there, you can do stuff a bit, bit better. But um, yeah. when you're starting off, you know you don't really have much at your disposal. Suppose not. Um, like when I when we started this, uh, let's see if I can get it. That microphone there on my camera was like plugged into like my my thing, and I had to go like really down low to use it. Mm. Yeah. I'm, do you know what my my original microphone was? Well, this. My headphones. I actually use my mic for the podcast. Yeah. Let me let me fi- let me fix this uh this chair now. I'm after dipping myself down. You're grand. But now I'm using the the nice old one. Sounds pretty good. I don't know. Do I sound okay? Sounds fine. Yeah. Kind of wish I had a more uh, what's the word? Not soft finish, but more echo cancellation in my room. I might start putting carpet up in my walls or something. Yeah. I I got like a bunch of um curtains in here and it helps and the floor is carpet oh, okay. it was basically the best room for it yeah i'm probably mine, gonna mine put like, like something back there 
Like I mean, behind I'm pretty the sure everybody can always hear my doorbell ring whenever that happens, or you'll hear my my dad shout or something. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, <laughs> every time, yeah, every I don't single time we have a guest on, you hear the doorbell. It doesn't go off anymore though; it's grand. But uh, yeah, you want to know if I can hear it? Look for the smile on my face. <laughs> yeah. I'd actually love for someone to make a compilation of all the times Thomas's doorbell goes off. <laughs> that would be pretty elite. Yeah. Funny. Yeah, that's that's up there. <laughs> so what else is going on at the moment? We kind of like touched on EDP, some other YouTubers. Uh, There's UFC okay. going on. Daniel Cormier wants to fight DC is Jake Paul. Going on though. Jake Paul, DC going at it. They want to, DC wants to fight Jake Paul MMA. I think if he does that, DC will win. He'll just get him on the ground straight away. Dude, the whole plan. could you imagine if Jake Paul won? Fuck. I mean... If he beats like the I'm former not, I'm not double really champ, because strikers have been there before, with like Connor versus Aldo, everyone thought Connor was gonna have to wrestle out because Aldo was a grappler, right? So everyone thought that fight was gonna be, or like, what's another good one? Uh, I think Alvarez is a is he a striker? Is he a grappler? Do you know by any chance? I wouldn't know. No, but like there, there, there's situations where strikers have gone. And beat wrestlers and DC's what like forty three men. I know he wants to fight Jake at two hundred five, which is light heavyweight. So, um, I don't know. Well, I mean, he can try. I wouldn't pick him as I my I guy. Don't see, I don't see it happening. To I, 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 I'd, with I'd you. pick Kamara Usman to fight him. I would, but it would kind of be like an insult for Usman to fight him. Is it? It is, yeah. I mean, Jake has had three professional fights in his boxing career. I, I don't know. I, I'd have a couple guys give it a go. I, I'd love to see Jorge Matabal do it, see McGregor do it. I'd love to see... Against Jake? Against, yeah, I'd like to see like, guys just slaughter him. Like, I'm not yeah. going to be like, hey, I want this little guy who just made his, his debut and lost to fight Jake Paul. I want Francis Ngannou to rearrange this guy's jaw. I know, I know he's a, so I know for the next. I'm gonna put three names out there to fight Jake next, and it's either gonna be Tommy Fury, who is the brother of Tyson Fury, you know, heavyweight IBF holder at the moment. You got Tyron Woodley, who recently left the UFC, so I think that makes that one more. And lost how many fights recently? Five. But he, yeah, he was good, wasn't he? Then his job oh, became he, nothing. He defended the welterweight title five times and then lost five welterweight fights after that, after losing to Usman. Rough. So, but he was the five-time welterweight champion because he, he defended it five times. Um, so you either have, what I say? Yeah, you get... Uh, Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury, you got... Tyron Woodley. Tyron Woodley. Or I've seen a lot of stuff for KSI. I don't know how true that is. I, I don't think it's good on... Uh, if, you, if you're standing from Jake's... This is what I've done. If you're looking at Jake's management team or you're looking at Jake himself and you see people saying, oh, you haven't fought an actual boxer, he does not go and fight KSI. That is a bad decision on his part. He needs to go and fight an actual boxer or someone who's good at striking. But he needs to find like a low-hanging fruit, which is what he does. So Tyron Woodley is the perfect opponent for him at the moment. But, the, literally off five losses the guy was kicked from the UFC he's friends with Ben Askren so it makes for a good story you know what I mean so or it's either KSI who you know I gotta avenge my brother or Tommy Fury who's what 5-0 and oh in his professional career in boxing and he's a pretty big name for being on Love Island and his brother so it's like yeah I don't know I think if Tommy Fury know. gets any training from his brother and takes on Jake he's gone but look, J- Jake's winning right now because we're having a chat about him. Fuck yes. him. Fuck the guy. Fuck you, Jake. Um, what was your what was your reaction to uh, to uh, the UFC bouts this weekend or last weekend? Happy. I was pretty happy with all the results of the fights. My, um, my, my guys lost. Maybe maybe not the Chris Weidman fight. I feel pretty bad for him. Hope he recovers quickly from it. Um, I think he should retire though. Chris Weidman, he's in his forties at the moment. And he can't tr- he can't train. Can't yeah. train for not, not only can he not so, train for six to ten months. They didn't say when he could fight. Yeah, so that's when he can get back into shape. Yeah, so I hope he takes the time to 
think about it at least. But if he does come back, you know, it's exciting to see Chris Weidman fight the guy with the middleweight champion. Um, you, you know yourself, like when it comes to like fitness, you you can put it on. You you can it can take months to like build up fitness and then days to take it away. Yeah, 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 pretty much. I've seen some like before and afters of like people going on like, you know, like maybe like binge drinking for like four days in a row, mm-hmm. and then like they just look like mush. No. Yeah. And uh, let's see what else happened then. Anthony Smith versus Cruz was a good fight. I think he was pretty disappointed by the stoppage with his knee. Yeah. Rose Nami Yunus. Well. Nami Yunus. Wow, what a fucking fight. Uh, I can't wait to see the rematch because there's definitely going to be a rematch. I don't think there's anybody else who could. I don't think there is a, like another good opponent at the moment other than like uh, Zhang Weili that could take on Nama Yunus. And in all fairness, Weili didn't really get a chance to. I mean, she tried in the first. Oh, there's a rematch yeah. coming. Oh, there has to be at least. You know? Zhang, Zhang Weili was going to slaughter Rose. As much as I love Rose. I, I seriously thought Zhang Wei Li was like built like nothing else. Mm. She she trains for fun. She trains consistently all the fucking time. Like she, she, if she's not training, she's recovering, and she does that very fucking fast. Yeah, and so that's a rematch to probably happen pretty soon. I mean, maybe, maybe definitely in this year, I'd say. Yeah, um, but, but fair play to Rose. Like you can't just say like she's great. No, Rose you, fucking... you won by accident. Like you won. You won. Well, she won. Are you kidding? Like e- even when your man like, um was it Chris Weidman like kicks your man's leg and it obviously was out because of that, the other guy still won because he had a stronger leg. Yeah. Like, there's so there's so many factors in a fight like that, mm. but Ro- Rose was very calculated and got the right shot and she won as a result. Mm. Like I- I'm disappointed in-, in Jorge losing. I thought he would have done very well. I don't care. But um, I can't stand. Well, he did pretty. He did pretty okay. Nope. Um and then. <laughs> no I'm messing. Yes, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Mar- Mar- Marty finally got to him. No. Kamaru Usman nailed it. He he fucking tired him out with his wrestling and then bet the fuck out of him. I don't think there was any toe stomping. Valentina Shevchenko versus Jessica Andrade was... Everyone thought Jessica Andrade would absolutely dominate Shevchenko with her wrestling. And it was just the complete opposite. Shevchenko dominated that fight with her wrestling. It was crazy. I mean, she's known for striking and grappling, but holy yeah. shit, man! She Such a good great. strategy, though. Like everyone, yeah. everyone, including the like the opponent, was thinking, "All right, can I get on the ground? Going to beat her that way." So what did mm-hmm. she do? She prepared to be on the ground and to dominate on the ground. Yeah. So you would think she's going to avoid it, but then when it happened, she just dominated. It was yeah. amazing. And it's the same with the Cameroon fight. Everyone thought he would take it to the ground. He'd out wrestle Jorge. Well, he did. He knocked him out. But he well, did wrestle him for two rounds. He wrestled him for, for the first round, man. But he knocked him out. He, he knocked out the knockout artist. Do you know what I mean? Like, Is Jorge a knockout artist, or did he get lucky with Ben Askren? And Darren Till. I think in his other, his other fights, he's been pretty good, but Ben Askren won. That is just fluke. Well, he did, he's a boxer. He's a kickboxer, isn't he? Jorge. So he... Uncertain. Pretty good. He know, yeah, so he knows his way, like, how to knock out people. But at the same time, fluke. Yeah, lucky me. Anyway. Uh, the lucky knee the lucky but, uh, knee yeah but like everyone thought that Jorge would end up knocking him out but it, just the complete opposite like nobody I don't think anybody expected Usman to knock him out and that's why I was it was 5 o'clock in the morning man and I was shouting because I like Usman I think he's a great fighter and he knocked him out I was like oh but do you know what the fun thing about that is man is that since Usman have got the belt he has knocked out every single opponent in front of him Colby He's Covington, beast. Gilbert Burns, and Jorge. Did he Not break Colby Covington's jaw? Well, Colby didn't like to admit it, but yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I do think Col- 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 Colby's like the Jake Paul of UFC. Like, he really wants you to hate him, and he does that shit on purpose. Mm, yeah. Like... Well, he, like, he's going around with a fucking make, Keep America Great hat, and he's fucking... Shouting and calling out everyone left, right, and center, screaming. You know, his profile picture on Insta is his. It's him with his interim belt and Trump. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, and even when I think when Trump was at the rally, one of his rallies, he he, some of the UFC guys were there. Like Dana was there. Um, so yeah. was Henry Cejudo. And no, I'm not, I'm not vilifying like 
Trump supporters. Uh, no. I'm just saying that. I'm like, just saying like he knows it's controversial, so he sides with it. People don't like Trump, and that this reality that people don't like Trump, and a, a lot of UFC fans, I guess, don't like Trump, so they associate with him being bad, and then they. See I, I I would think they're more fans of Trump, especially with Dana White being like an avid Trump supporter. Well, then why why do people hate Covington then? If, um, if he doesn't like if uh, if he's. You know I think. What I mean? That's, well, the average yeah. MMA fan is fucking mental. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I, I think they more on that side, but I think like lads like ourselves be a bit more like chill. I, like I, it's not gonna piss me off, but I think he does do it for shock value. Because who's who's gonna wear like their political beliefs as a hat while they're arguing with a guy? Well, like, th- th- didn't he win a fight and then wore the hat and people were like, I remember that happening definitely. Yeah. Weird. I don't know. They're all about fucking politics over there, man. It's really weird. Like, I have friends who are in Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, mm. in Sinn Féin, and the Green Party. Even Undecided. <laughs> you have people everywhere. So, like, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean... But it was a very politicised thing in the States, in fairness. Like, yeah, they're, it, they're it spread over to here. Imagine what it was like living there if it was just all we seen. Yeah. Like, we talk a lot about being Americanized over here. Yeah. And that's absolutely true. Like, people who won't talk to each other because of their disagreements on Trump versus Biden. Man, in a country that I don't live in. Up, man. It's crazy. Sure. Yeah, like we've even had, even had guests on saying like, yeah, it's one of those things that no one's ever going to bring up at the family dinner anymore. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But like people did, people weren't as like open about their politics or as involved in their politics as they are now. I yeah. think anyway. Mm. I think after like such a politicized year, people just went dug in basically became minor level politicians because pe- pe- people who would just say like who, who would have used to say like oh I, I just like the the person or whatever you know going in and pulling up statistics from like off from their head like that that's that's impressive yeah a bit scary crazy how but impressive just like you'd be almost scared if you were you know if you were left in a group of rights or you were right in a group of lefts like, do you know what I mean? Like, it'd be... And then if you're sent there in boat? <laughs> Imagine. I mean, I, I have, yeah. you know, values of both sides. Stuff like that, it's weird. Especially yeah. if you're someone in, like, public, like we are, that are, like, making podcasts. Or I, I find a lot of stand-ups, they don't, they tend to, like, well, not really the late-night show hosts, but, like, because they just love fucking political humour that isn't funny. It's not original. Make actual jokes. But, yeah, you know, go ahead. Keep most co- stand-up comedians, they tend to, like, say, I don't really know who I'm going to vote for yet because they want their audience to be of both. Like, you know what I mean? Well, I want to find out what he's going to do, you know? Yeah, like, and, and fucking right on them because you want, you want, <laughs> you want people to come see you. Who cares what their political stance is? In fairness, in fairness. <laughs> But I suppose when when you when you're gravitating towards an individual, I guess that's gonna kind of matter to you. Like yeah, like if it turned out the Rock was like, I don't know, I don't know if the Rock was like a big Bernie guy. I think Bernie Bernie supporters would be like, uh, if he's a big Trump guy, they they'd be like, yeah, you know. And same with like, what whatever he was, like you kind of want to know because it kind of like makes you feel more related to them. I suppose. Yeah. Like, pe- people kind of gravitate towards Ben Shapiro because they have some ideas that they agree with, with him. Yeah. But then he kind of expands upon it and then they feel connected to him because they feel like they're learning from him. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sure there's people I, I don't follow them personally. I, like, I've never heard of, like, the equivalent of, like, a left-wing Ben Shapiro. But I'm sure there's ones out there. He would probably do the same thing. Probably. And I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. That guy seems off the rails. Remember he did meme review? Crazy. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, he did meme review. I think if he wasn't so... I'm not going to get into that. I think... Well, Stubborn Stubborn's one of those things. Because one thing I, I like about another guy... I, I'm not really the biggest fan of him, but I do watch his occasional thing. You know, Stephen Crowder? L- louder with Crowder. He will go up. He'll go to these places and he'll actually talk to people rather than like, do what Ben does and say, like, they're all crazy liberals, man. Like he'll show up and he'll have a debate or he'll have a conversation 
fact checked and all like with people from um oh is he the guy who goes to the colleges and does it with students yes yeah I, now, i've seen some of his videos yeah so, sometimes he goes a bit of a mile above but um other times he just sits there and talks like do you, do you really think like voter id is like oppressive and he'll do it in like a white college campus and then he'll go off to like i don't know somewhere that's i guess it's has more minorities and ask their opinion and you'll see the contrast now whether or not he keeps in the maybe whether or not like he changes it to suit his ideas is up for debate but um you know i, I like i like people who kind of listen to both sides or especially journalists do that do that kind of stuff that's the thing you gotta listen to both sides because because otherwise if you're, you're getting all your information from one side it's gonna be based right uh, yeah sure based on red pilled but imagine like you only got your news off like alex jones or ben shapiro like or, or david weiss do you know what i mean like yeah imagine you only got your stuff off those guys you having a rough old time you'd be <laughs> you'd be out of the box but then like imagine you only got it off i don't know um, well they're they're, yeah. <laughs> they're they're okay sometimes i'm, I'm sure like there's, there's somewhere i see equivalent um pink news imagine you only got your news off pink news your I head i don't know what that is but i presume it's something on the left it's is pr- it? pretty out there sometimes oh. pretty out there but imagine you only got like stuff off them your head would be melted yeah you'd, you'd think the fact that there's ham and cheese in your sandwich is oppressive because it didn't include the butter or something oh. <laughs> i don't know um i, I think there's a bit, a bit of craziness on both sides but look we're now we're an hour in um, you got anything else you want to talk about? Go on, give give something. I think we've covered all bases on pretty much everything. Everything, ever. Uh, uh, What's your favorite dinosaur? Um, chicken. Shout out to Jack Horner. Fun fact: you know, like Dino Chicken Nuggets are technically dinosaurs. <laughs> it's not even technically; they are dinosaurs. <laughs> or like plastic. Like plastic dinosaurs, boom! Dinosaurs, fossil fuels. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a crazy one. Um, yeah, they were around for a long time. I've been, I've been kind of looking at more paleontology stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they, they they're fucking mental. Okay. You would you wouldn't believe when when they died out, there was a part of uh, South America, um, that oh, it was like what, two or five million years later was still recovering, mm-hmm. but the thing was there was no mammals that were like dominating in that area. So there was gigantic crocodiles, gigantic snakes, gigantic turtles. You ever hear Titanoboa? It's the biggest snake that was ever, ever, ever found. And it used to be like a gigantic predator. All right. Yeah. Sounds. It was. It, it was the last time a, an ecosystem was ever uh, dominated by reptiles. Nice. So fun fact. Cool. There you go. So there's a little nugget of information for you. Um, if you got this far for Plasia. As always, uh, love you to bits. Stay away from yourself. Good luck and um, take it handy. Bye-bye.